This is lesson four, and this is the final lesson in our unit over parent and offspring. It's for fifth grade. This lesson is titled Traits and Heredity. In this lesson, you're going to hear the following vocabulary, heredity, inherited trait, instinct, gene, dominant trait, recessive trait, pedigree, and carrier. So, let's get to it. What is heredity? Well, heredity is the passing down of traits from parents to offspring. It's the reason why your parents may have blue eyes and you have blue eyes too. Or maybe your parents are tall and you're tall too. That's because you receive those traits from your parents through heredity. Um, heredity applies to all organisms, and even plants. Flower color, plant height, that's all inherited traits. An inherited trait is a trait that an offspring receives from its parent. And now, again, with humans, some inherited traits include hair, dimples, eye color, maybe facial features, maybe the way you laugh, things you just do, little quirks that your parents have. You might have received that as an inherited trait from them. Um, heredity can affect some behaviors. Some behaviors, um, such as instincts, they're inherited. An instinct is a way of acting or behaving that an animal's born with. It does not have to learn. So the difference here, an inherited trait is something you receive from your parent. that you, And an instinct, it's a way of acting or behaving you didn't learn. Which, and that's the difference from a learned trait is something you learn how to do. Like you learn how to use a computer or you learn how to write your name. But an instinct is something you're born doing. Like you know how to eat. You know how to breathe. That's just stuff you know that's innate inside you that you, you are born with to help you survive. Like spiders know how to build webs. It's just part of, of what they know when they're born keeps them from living. Okay. So again, a learned behavior is a developed over the course of a lifetime, which again, like I said, learning how to maybe do homework or maybe a dog learning to play catch. Those are um, learned behaviors. The ability to learn helps animals survive. Um, there's, for example, there's one learned behavior. It's called imprinting that helps young birds survive. Imprinting occurs when an animal forms a social bond with another organism shortly after hatching. So whenever it hatches, and you've probably seen this in cartoons, and the bird looks up at its mom in the cartoon and goes, Mama, that's imprinting. It, it knows who its mother is directly or, or right after it's born. And these traits instincts, inherited traits. They come from both parents. So you may do some things like your mom and some things like your dad. That's because you inherited both of their traits. Um, so again, heredity is the passing down of traits from parents to offspring. Inherited traits are th traits that you receive from your parents. Instincts are things that you're born knowing how to do. And learned behaviors are traits that you or behaviors that you learn how to do over a lifetime. How are traits inherited? Well, the, the, before we start that, we need to think of this. We might need to think of the work of Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk he, who studied and discovered the basic principles of heredity. Mendel grew up on a farm where he was curious about how traits were passed in plants and animals. In 1856, he began experimenting with garden pea plants at his monastery, and he crossed plants that had different traits and observed how they were passed to each other. He studied pea plants because they produced seeds quickly, and then they, the traits were easy to trace from one generation to the next. Well, Mendel spent seven years carefully conducting his experiments with pea plants. and Based on his results, Mendel determined that inherited traits are passed from parent to offspring during reproduction. He believed that each inherited trait is controlled by two factors. You receive one factor from each parent 
and we now call those genes. A gene um, contains the chemical instructions, you could say, for your inherited traits, and those are stored on cell structures called chromosomes, which are found in the nucleus of your cells. Mendel found for each trait, one form of that trait could mask or hide the other one. Um, for example, he would cross purple and white plants, and he would find if he crossed two purples, the traits for whites reappeared in the next generation. The trait for white had not disappeared, but it had just been hidden by the purple ones. So he's discovered that there are dominant and recessive forms of these traits. A dominant trait is one that dominates. It masks another form of that trait. For example, I have blue eyes. My wife has brown eyes. My, our son has blue eyes, which uh, oh, my parents have blue eyes and my wife's parents, except for her mother, have brown eyes. So you can tell that the dominant gene in this case would be blue eyes. So that was passed along to the next generation of our son, and he has blue eyes. So that's masking the brown. The brown is still there. He still carries that gene, and he could very well have ch children one day that have brown eyes. A recessive trait's the one that's being hidden, being masked by the other form. So in that case, the brown eyes again. Um, each form of that trait can be represented with letters, usually a capital letter is used for the dominant form, which you can see here. And the lowercase letter is used to show the recessive trait. Um, so in this case, they show the purple, capital P's, and little p's for white. So dominant, recessive, and it shows from each generation, they each get one letter. P, 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 P. Okay? And then you have your next generation where they've passed it along until it all works out. P, P, P. Okay. So knowing this information can help humans to determine maybe the shape of their earlobes, what their hairline will look like, what their thumbs may be like, hitchhiker thumbs, for example. And dominant traits tend to be expressed more frequently than recessive traits because, again, recessive traits are masked or dominated by the dominant traits. So how can we trace these inherited traits? How can we find out maybe what we're going to be like or what our children are going to be like? such as maybe what, what's their hair going to look like, what are their eyes going to look like. You can use these um, pedigrees, which a pedigree is a chart used to trace the history of traits in your family. Uh, they're used to study heredity patterns. Um, parents and offspring are shown in the pedigree that you see here with the parents' generation of the mother and father that traits pass along to their children, um, their daughters and sons, showing dimples as the dominant trait, and no dimples as a recessive trait, and it shows in one gen one of their children they were they have no dimples, so that shows that the mother and father carried a recessive trait, both of them, so you would have two lowercase d's for the dimples here, so that they're carriers a carrier is an individual who inherited the gene for the trait, but they're not showing that trait but they have it. So example, again, my son has blue eyes, but my wife has brown. He is a carrier of brown eyes. So his children may one day have brown eyes. Okay, uh, A couple things about this, how it's made. Horizontal lines connect the parents. Vertical lines connect parents to offspring. Um, males are often represented with boxes, and females are shown with circles. Um, Individuals with dominant traits, you can see, are shaded in, and unshaded shows recessive. Okay, so that's how you can trace. That's one way using a pedigree. And as you go along in your studies of heredity, uh, you'll find other ways with Punnett squares and uh, just different ways of uh, tracing these traits and figuring out maybe what you'll be like or what your children will be like. So this was a quick lesson on um, heredity and traits. If you're interested in more, feel free to look up any videos on YouTube, especially over Punnett squares. That could be interesting for you. And um, if you have other questions for me, feel free to message me on Edmodo.